Hello, D class. It is I, the great Dr. Bright. I know I have not seen you for a while. I got a new <laughs> computer. And here with me is my friend Aderna. Hello. <laughs> so now we'll continue with our topic of what's the most powerful and dangerous SCPs. Starting with 094. <clears throat> SCP-094 appears to be a perfectly black sphere, 163 centimeters in diameter, suspended approximately 3 meters off the ground with no apparent means of support. SCP-094 has been classified as a miniature event horizon. Any matter that, that moves into SCP-094, including light, is irretrievably gone. However, SCP-094 is not a black hole since it does not exert a gravitational pull. SCP-094 has been known to occasionally emit a number of different sounds, including ambient sounds of nature, static buzzing, and sometimes human speech. No attempts to communicate with SCP-094 has yet succeeded. It is unknown whether these sounds come from SCP-094 itself, from uh, from something or things inside SCP-094, or from some area that connects through SCP-094. A certain percentage of persons appear to be drawn to SCP-094 because of the sounds in, in it, it, it emits. SCP-094 was discovered in 19... redacted in Chubut province of southern Argentina, and at the Time was estimated to be 20 to 25 centimeters in diameter. Analysis of historical records indicates that the diameter of SCP-094 doubles in size approximately every 31 years. Primary research activates uh, uh, primary research activities on SCP-094 are concentrated on finding how to stop or reverse its growth without inducing cataclys cataclysmic failure. Would you like me to read any addendums or any other information, Aderna? Sure. All right. Addendum. The hand on SCP-1032, designated SCP-1032-15, will achieve its midnight event on uh, September 4th, 2690. Approximately the same date as SCP-094 will fully engulf the Earth at its current rate of expansion. Note, a few millimeters a month may not seem like much, and no, at the moment you cannot see SCP-094 change day to day, but if it continues to its exponential growth in less than 250 years, it'll be a, a kilometer wide, including ver vertically, and that is assuming it does not grow even faster, which is an assumption that almost no one here makes. Dr. Luane Garcia. That is our information on 094. Okay. Even I I at first I thought it could be one of the the classes, but like <laughs> the thing is it's going to take so long for it to grow. And by the time that happens, the Foundation is probably going to come up with something to stop it. Most likely. There's a, a huge chance that can happen. So I don't think it could be one of the classes. You can't? You don't think it could be one of the what? The, uh, the class SCPs. Like, uh, the, the end of reality or the end of the world SCP. I, uh. I don't think it could go in that category, mainly because it's taking way too long to actually do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. But, um... Hmm. I don't think it should go city or below, because, like... It said, like, uh... Like, 250 years, and less than that, it could, like, 
literally grow larger than a city or something hmm. like that. And like that's big. But I don't think it could I'm either thinking continent or country. Either yeah, of those two groups. Yeah, that works. Yeah, but um a city could work too because right. by that time the human race might be non existent, so that wouldn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and put it at city because it's taking a really long time to grow. Yeah. Alright. So let's see what is next. Oh. Well, I'm hoping that you're ready to laugh. Oh my. It's a joke SCPs next. Ah. Oh. I mean even though it's a joke SCP, like we have one joke SCP that's extremely dangerous. <laughs> so even though it's hilarious, it could be really bad, dangerous. Oh yeah. All right. <clears throat> Description. SCP-100 J appears to be a 42 centimeter by a 32 centimeter mound of equine feces. Wait, what? The SCP maintains a constant mo moistness as well as an inner temperature of 38.3 degrees Celsius. Whenever a new operative joins Site-19, there is a 75% chance that a new SCP will, will be spawned from SCP-100-J. And um, there is a 50% chance of a new SCP being sentient. Non-sentient hmm. SCPs come in a variety of categories. Many are weapons, all of which are so extraordinary abilities upon the user. And the majority of such weapons are swords of small, a minority being rather awkwardly modified firearms. Additional non-sentient SCPs tend to be uh, items that either work better than they should or work in a direct opposition to the way they should. Sentient SCPs come in two main categories. Majority of humanoid SCPs appeared as idealized versions of the new operative, physically attractive, with a multitude of abilities and tend to make people feel uncomfortable in their presence. Non-humanoid oh. SCPs are usually some form of enhanced normal creature, but with bizarre coloring. Hmm. They yes. have a list of SCPs if you would like to know what came out. Hmm. All right. I'm curious. All right. Addendum. List of SCPs created from SCP-100-J. SCP Redacted D. Little Addy. SCP appeared to be Adolf Hitler at six years old. SCP was terminated without any alterations to to the time stream. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> SCP 048-D. Joey. That's a, a solid reaction to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> SCP you don't want to mess around and yeah. Accidentally let Hitler come back to power. <laughs> oh yeah, no. No, no, no. He, he, he stayed dead. <laughs> anyway, uh, Joey. SCP was a dog with a human face. Friendly accepted, hmm. uh, except when taunted. SCP was put to sleep without any negative effects. Aww. Aww. They killed... Hmm. SCP-083-D. Duke. SCP appeared to be a polite and well-mannered vampire. SCP was terminated by Agent Ooh. Kondraki near after a near destruction of Site-19. Wait, what? Uh, uh, Are uh, all uh, these going to end up dead? 
Are... Is it a polite vampire? Or what? It said a polite and well mannered vampire. So. <laughs> Anyway. My question is, why was it almost destroyed? Was it due to the vampire, or...? Uh, it does not say. Of course it doesn't say. <laughs> no, Fire Council doesn't want you to know, Derna. Uh, I guess I gotta join the Five Council and then fucking... <laughs> you see the information. <laughs> Watch it be something that uh, that I did. That involved chainsaws. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> and then, in trying to cover it up, they killed. No, or somehow, like. Oh, actually, possibly it could be something where it's like. He got. Uh, there was. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next one is SCP-886-D, Vibrations. SCP hmm. appeared to be a skin-tight suit that interacted directly with the subject's nervous system, granting them incredible powers. SCP was burned with no adverse side effects. <laughs> what the fuck? Are all of these two going to end up dead? <laughs> SCP 9666 D Reverse Air Purifier. SCP acted as an air purifier but in reverse. SCP was smelted in resulting scrap used to line the floor in SCP 173's room. What? It didn't die. Why? <laughs> no, it did. It did die. It did die. It was smelted down. It died. <laughs> All right. SCP 108 D, the man of war, human male resembling Agent James Redacted, proved to be unstoppable when in possession of any weapon. Subject was given SCP 572 and self decapitated. Wait, what? <laughs> Okay. SCP-685-D, Bag of Holding. SCP appeared to be a normal satchel capable of holding an unlimited quantity of items. SCP Please was turned me. inside out and vanished. How? I don't know. Would that consider being dying or... I don't know. <laughs> How the fuck did it get turned inside out? I don't know. And who turned it inside out? I don't or know. Or what? <laughs> SCP-122-D, large canine. SCP was a large winged dog. SCP was put to sleep with no complications. Gosh damn it, are all of them going to be dead? What? I'm. Uh... SCP 096 D. Too good air get... conditioner. An air conditioner that reduced room temperatures to zero degrees. SCP was smelted down and the scrap was not used. <laughs> Gosh damn it. Did... Do they, do they know how to do anything without destroying things? I don't know. Like, like they're supposed to be to sec secure and protect and shit. All they're doing is destroying shit. All right. SCP 547 D, Nature's Fury. SCP was a teenage male identical to appearance to Dr. Timothy Redacted, but wielding unbelievable power. SCP was terminated by accident. 
<laughs> Fuck. <laughs> sure. Accident. How was it terminated by accident? How? <laughs> Please tell us how it was terminated. <laughs> It doesn't say. I wish I had the drawn 05 to find out. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm going to have to join the 05 and. Here. Uh, SCP 072 D, a spell book. SCP was a thick book which claimed to contain magic spells. SCP was burned with no complications. Why? Why? <laughs> the fucking spell book. <laughs> We're almost done through these. SCP 226 D. Chrono Komodo. A sentient statue of a Komodo dragon that possessed time controlling abilities. That's SCP cool. was terminated well, by accident by Dr. Iceberg. And Professor Kane Pathos Crow. Of course it was. <laughs> Were any of these not killed? I don't know. I'm looking through. <laughs> SCP 153 D. The Impaler's Thumb. SCP was a mummified thumb that was that turned its holder into a, a patriotic, a xenophobic racist. Oh. Oh, okay. Maybe this one was good that it's destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did they destroy it or did it not? Yep, destroy SCP it? was accidentally incinerated by Dr. Kondraki. Okay, that one that one sounds like it, it was quote, that unquote, was a good cause. That was a good cause. That one sounds that one sounds like it was quote unquote accidentally. <laughs> yeah. Like, really. Yeah, but really. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I accidentally did it. I'm sorry <laughs> I wanted to become a even Worst person. There. SCP 1016 D. Ben the Cyborg, a self described computer genius whose body parts were largely replaced by computer hardware. Decommissioned by Dr. Gears. Wait, decommissioned? Um, yeah. So, killed. No, 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 no. Usually in decommissioned SCP universe, that means you're taken off from being an SCP. You're explained. They let you go. Hmm. So they're alive. <laughs> I mean, he only claimed to be a genius. Oh, so he wasn't a genius. Okay. Yeah, a self-described computer genius, which means you're probably not one. <laughs> I mean, probably not one unless you're like you actually know the shit you're talking about. Right. Like right. SCP-106 D. Exploding Woman. SCP was a woman who, by inserting her finger inside her a human's navel and touching one of her organ of their organs would explode, regenerating twenty days later. SCP was Wait, destroyed what? by subjecting it to the simu simultaneous presence of SCP 048 D and SCP 053. What the fuck? Uh, uh... SCP-151-D. K. SCP was a creature that resembled an albino human child with a furry tail. Possessed psychokinetic abilities and a strong hate for personnel convicted of violent crime towards women and or children. Wait, it's what? Basically, like... She hated people who were, you know, harming women and children. Oh, okay. That's good. Please don't tell me they destroyed it. SCP was decommissioned by exposure to, to SCP-056. Which means let go. 
but probably mm -hmm. after falling under 056's effects. <laughs> it, I, I'm thinking 0566, I'm not sure if I remember correctly, is probably an anti meme. So, if it got what exactly then? I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, can you really explain what the SAP Foundation does? <laughs> <laughs> they say they're just here to protect, but they're fucking destroying everything, so. <laughs> the new GOC. <laughs> anyway, SCP 806 D. SCP was a white rubber mask that went up for people's heads until they died. That what? M metaphored people's heads until mm -hmm. they died was destroyed by unified staff effort within 26 hours of its emergence. Okay. SCP, here you go. You're going to love this. The O5 Council wants to give you as much information as possible. SCP Redacted Dash D, the reanimated corpse of a uh. former United States President James Garfield, captured and oh. incinerated. Okay. I'm done with that. SCP Redacted Most Dash D. presidents were horrible people, so... True. <laughs> SCP Redacted Dash D. An evil goblin jester that likes to murder people. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Fed to SCP-682. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Let me see. There's only one left. My question is, why does 6 to like hate humanity? Is it because is it because of people like that? I mean, he's a child of a Scarlet King, and child Scarlet and the Scarlet King wants to literally enslave the human race and destroy reality. So <laughs> I don't think there's much reason for 682 to hate humanity. <laughs> Well, actually, no, there's tons of reasons, but... Like, I don't think 682 would really care. He just wants to end us. <laughs> I mean, he did say he finds us disgusting. His exact words. <laughs> That's the only reason. <laughs> but, um, anyway. The final SCP... SCP Redacted Dash D. Eight billion humans they gain psychic powers when their brains are not exposed to radiation. All instances are allowed to be terminated by SCP 076 2 as a reward for good behavior. Okay. <laughs> Zero dash two. Uh, SCP zero seven six dash two is able. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, that's able. <laughs> A reward for good behavior for, from him. For yeah, for if he if he's on good behavior, he'll he'll be allowed to kill these people. But wait. Wait, how many people are in the world right now? If there's 8 billion people in the SCP universe that are, you know, like, this SCP. Mm -hmm. How many people are in the world right now? Oh, well. But anyway. So. The only thing that I can see from this is because. I don't see a lot of hostility coming out except for the foundation. <laughs> so I'm thinking either only one mm -hmm. or reassign. Uh, what do you think, Adarna? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm more leaning on to reassign because most of the death is being caused by the Foundation, not the SCP. 
<laughs> I just find it funny that it is like a mound of horse shit that's creating these SCPs. <laughs> just just a mound. <laughs> yeah. So, so the SCP Foundation is yeah. I think Killing they're just everyone making, who ha- Yeah, I think they're making it more dangerous than it needs to be. Yeah. There are parts of it that are dangerous, but like it but it's like easily handled. Alright. So I I'm gonna go ahead and put in reassigned. Because, I mean, that can be put okay. in Euclid. Like, that's not safe, but, like, we don't fully understand it either. Yeah. All right. Let's see. What's next? Next is... <laughs> it's only a letter difference. SCP-100-JP which is the J- Japanese branch. And, yeah, the, the SCP wiki has multiple branches for multiple different countries. Which is mm. why I love it, because, like, you know, yeah. there's so nice things. Okay. <clears throat> SCP-100-JP is a wooden toy... A two-story house with an attic found in Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico. The original owner of this building was redacted. Following his death, the house was left without pro- uh, proprietors. The first and second floor of SCP-100-JP are rooms with no anomalous qualities. However, the attic, which is accessible by a ladder, located on the second floor, contains a space with an interior size far exceeding that of the building's exterior. This space exists in a completely non-gravitational and vacuum state. Investigation of the space via drones has revealed that the space extends for 127 kilometers in either direction, owing to the fact that the wooden walls extend in all directions and disappear into the horizon. The space appears to be warped. Following incident 100-2, attempts to destroy the the walls are strictly forbidden. The space inside the attic in SCP-100-JP contains vast amounts of heavenly bodies consisting of wooden material seemingly derived from various furniture. The planets are about 10 centimeters in diameter, and fi- fixed stars with light bulbs inserted are far more enormous. The source of wood light, light bulbs and power supply to light the, the bulbs are still undetermined. Moreover, the heavenly bodies crumble even at, the, at a slight touch. Foundation astronomers have discovered that the circum Stances of these heavenly bodies correspond with those in our universe at the present time. It has been proven that damage dealt to the heavenly bodies correspondingly damages the actual heavenly bodies they represent, and damage dealt to the walls will equally damage the fabric of space. Because of these traits, experiments within SCP-100-JP are strictly forbidden. Incident 100-1 in Redacted, when a research team led by Foundation astronomers entered SCP-100-JP to investigate the space in detail, the researcher mistakenly destroyed a star inside SCP-100-JP. Redacted years later in Redacted, the star Redacted near the constellation Taurus suddenly went supernova despite its young stellar age. Immediately after this incident, it was observed by Foundation astronomers. SCP-100-JP, formerly thought of as as an object simply mimicking heavenly bodies, was classified as a Euclid-class object. 
planets and stars destroyed by minor contact during surveys of SCP-100-JP. Numbered more than redacted. Fortunately, all of these heavenly bodies destroyed were located far away from the planet resembling Earth, and it was estimated that the incidents would cause no harm to life on Earth. Incident 100-2 In Redacted, some parts of SCP-100-JP collapsed to an earthquake resulting in holes in the walls of the attic and many heavenly bodies destroyed. This caused... Data restricted to personnel of level 5 clearance by O5 Council. Considering the fact that SCP-100-JP is, is a in danger of annihilation due to the wear and tear and or natural hazards, SCP-100-JP was reclassified as a Keter class object. Well, oh, hmm. shit. That goes in the universe class. <laughs> uh, yeah, like it, like if someone was to lay the wrong area, that that would literally annihilate us. Like, well, the it's either reality or universe. Like, I think it's universe. Well, then it wouldn't be. Reality is like above universe, mm -hmm. so we're gonna put in, in XK, which is the world and everything around it. Like, because reality basically means like any, any SCP reality would also be destroyed if if it's if it's done, it's damaged enough. Wait, we don't know if. We don't know if it affects other realities. That that that's true. That's why I'm also saying like it's not CK. That's why I put it XK because it it's not. We don't know if it's in other realities. We only know it's in in this one. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Well, we don't know if it what happens in this reality affects other realities either. That's also true. Which is why probably the foundation. <laughs> it, it, I mean, they should have sent more careful people in it. <laughs> yeah. To study it. All right. Yeah, they fucking destroyed a solar system. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you pre if you touch enough of them, yes. <laughs> but well, also, it a, is an instant. Uh, Destroy the solar system surrounding it. Oh, yeah, that's true. All right. So our next SCP is another joke one. So here we go. Description. SCP-103-J is a secretive power elite with a globalist agenda that intends to eventually rule the world through an authoritarian world government, America. Hmm. Anyway, um, agents of SCP-103-J. Pretty much almost <laughs> every government, honestly. True. At this point, like... <laughs> uh, agents of SCP-103-J present similarly similarly to Foundation agents, except with subtle, better cars, control over world affairs and spouses huh. Un under controlled conditions SCP-103-J-1 can deadlift an average of 10% more weight than foundation agents SCP-103-J-2 refers to a class of three-sided 
uh, polygonal figures with largely unexplored eccentric through maturgic reality warp warping and otherwise spooky properties. Jesus, hey. that was a hard ass sentence to say. <laughs> Current evidence. So basically, oh, wait, yeah. Basically, the, the evil SCP Foundation. Yeah. <laughs> Current evidence suggests that SCP 103 J 1 exude SCP 103 J 2 from their sweat glands as a way of marking territory, incorporating them Wait, in what? into various objects, locations, and media. The presence of SCP 103 J 2 is the most re reliable way of detecting the presence of SCP 103 J. SCP-103-J-2 is sometimes found alongside SCP-103-J-I, which data expunged. The primary threat posed by SCP-103-J is poorly understood, as their security is better than ours. It is the opinion of the O5 Council that SCP-103-J poses the risk of an FK class domination shift ratio, Destroying SCP-103-J is currently the top priority of the Foundation. Yeah, I can see why. <laughs> Addendum 103-J-1. The presence of SCP-103-J-2 has been confirmed and many current contained anomalies, su suggesting that SCP-103-J has infiltrated the Foundation extensively. What follows is photographic evidence to this event for some additional documentation please access confirm settings list hold on I can I, see how it would yeah. be able to infiltrate it yeah I can send you pictures all right SCP-184 has may have additional instances of SCP-103-J-2. Further research is recommended. As if SCP-07, uh, SCP-701-1 wasn't fucked up already. SCP-103-J-2's uh, power levels are increased by up to 33% under sufficiently spooky circumstances. <laughs> For the gate guardian, they say, you know what? They can have this one. And for um, the bowl, I forgot its name, but it's like a bowl where after you eat it, you get a, a kind message from your father in the bowl. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it's been affected. But hold Aww. on. Before I finish reading, I what happened am, to the bowl? Uh, it has the instance in it. Hold on. I'll send you the pictures of the SCP it's affected. If it wants to load, Discord, please. And there you go. Now you're not left out of the loop. I'll do that if it ever like talks about pictures. Okay. Yeah. Now you, now you know what I was talking about. <laughs> Alright. Addendum 103-J-2. Operation Declassify was initiated in 2006 with an aim of disrupting SCP-103-J's operations and neutralizing the threat it poses to the Foundation's... Oh my gosh, they... <laughs> the SCP affected a document and it's it, it put apostrophe s ego <laughs> at the end of the sentence. <laughs> anyway, the goal was to kidnap, brainwash, and demoralize SCP 103 J 1 instances before killing them. The particular mechanism for this is outlined in Dr. Grace's proposal addressing personal storage storages via for forcible out outside recruitment. 
interview SCP-103-J-289. Dr. Grayson. Ingenious, isn't it? D-289. Uh-huh. You're already wiped from public record, and your deaths have already been faked. Your employers took care of that for us. Sure. Nobody will miss you. Much lower risk than those death row inmates that we we used to use. Right. And because you're, you're already at debt at survival, we don't run through so many of you. That's nice. You're really are the perfect disposable personnel, wouldn't you agree? Dr. Grayson, did you bring me here just to brag about how smart you are? Uh, no, there's another reason. Alright, what is it? You haven't been following the adequate guidelines we assigned you. That's because they're degrading. So? You actually get a kick out of making us act like that. Just follow them or suffer the consequences. Understood? Sighs loudly, adopts Jersey accent. You fucking got it, Doc. And that's the end of this SCP. Or all information regarding it. So this is basically the the foundation, but more evil. But from what I'm seeing, they're not really attacking people. They're just attacking the foundation. Hmm. Because like they're only attacking the SCPs that the foundation is after or has, or messing with the SCP foundation themselves. So if I were to, so, so it so, so it would make anti, sense. Yeah, anti foundation kind of. Yeah, so it would make sense that it would go into a certain group, and that certain group would be the Foundation and SCPs, because they're not going after people. <laughs> what well, what do you think? Aderna? Yeah. Uh, um, I, I, oh, sorry. It's interesting. <laughs> I... Mm, you're, you're not sure? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if... if I mean, we can always come back to these SCPs if we think of something else. Mm-hmm. So I think we should just put in a certain group. <laughs> um... So, what? So, what group do you think they should be in? Oh no, there's there's one on here that's called uh, one tier that's called certain group. Oh, certain group. Oh, okay. Yeah, the certain group would be like SCPs and the Foundation. Like they don't go after people; they just go after the people trying to help the human race, sort of. Though, the next SCP is, an, is one I think you do know. He's very popular. SCP-106. Alright. Description. SCP-106 appears to be an elderly humanoid with a general appearance of advanced decomposition. This appearance may vary, but the writing quality is observed in in all forms. SCP-106 is not exceptionally agile. It will remain motionless for days at a time, waiting for prey. 
SCP-106 is also capable of scaling any vertical surface and can remain suspended upside down indefinitely. When attacking, SCP-106 will attempt to incapacitate prey by damaging major organs, muscle groups, or tendons, then pull disabled prey into its pocket dimension. Oh yeah, I know what this one is. Yeah, do you want me to continue, or do you think we can we can put it in a group? Sure. Uh, wait, is that for reading or? You can continue reading if you want. Okay. So other uh, so the people who are watching this right know what we're talking about. True. Yeah. SCP-106 appears to prefer human prey items in a 10 to 25 years of age bracket. SCP-106 causes a corrosion effect in, in all solid matter it touches, engaging a physical breakdown in materials several seconds after contact. This is observed as rusting, rotting, and cracking of materials and the creation of a black mucus-like substance similar to the material coding SCP-106. This effect is pr particularly detrimental to living tissues and is assumed to be a pre-digestion action. Corrosion continues in for six hours after contact, after which the effect appears to burn out. SCP-106 is capable of passing through solid matter, leaving behind a large path of its corrosive mucus. SCP-106 is able to vanish inside solid matter, entering what is assumed to be a form of pocket dimension. Mm -hmm. SCP-106 is then able to exit this dimension from any point connected to its initial entry point. Uh, it is unknown if this is the point of origin for SCP-106 or a simple layer created by SCP-106. Mm -hmm. Limited observation of this pocket dimension has shown it to be comprised mostly of, of halls and rooms with data expunged entry. Mm -hmm. This activity can continue for days, with, with some subjected individuals being released for express purpose of hunting, recapture, and data expunged. Yeah, um... Even though I know it's dangerous, I'm not going to put it any higher. It really bad, really dangerous. I, I don't think it should go any higher than City. Because it's like mm -hmm. only going after one person at a time. Yeah. Well, you could put it at only one, but. <laughs> right. Or a certain group, possibly. I mean, actually, it would be smart to put it in a certain group. Mainly because it only targets people from 10 to 50, uh, 25 years of age or people who are wounded. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, that one was actually a lot quicker than I thought it would be. <laughs> there we go. Alright, let's see what's next. Said, oh no. What? It's 106 dash J. Another joke one. Yep. Oh no. <laughs> <sighs> oh my gosh. Anyway, description, SCP-106 is an elderly humanoid with the appearance of being basted in a thick marinade. This appearance Wait. may vary, but the saucy quality is observed in all forms. SCP-106 enjoys reclining in its armchair and will remain motionless for days at a time, waiting for visitors. SCP-106-J appears to prefer visitors in the range of 10 to 25 years of age. SCP-106-J causes a char, a grilling effect, and all solid matter it touches. 
observed as a smoking seared gridarian pattern as well as the creation of a brown viscous substance similar to the material covering SCP-106-J. Analysis reveals this to be mainly composed of vinegar and tomato paste, as well as various spices, seasonings, and sweeteners. This effect remains for four hours before seemingly to go cold and stale. SCP-106-J is capable of vanishing into stoves or ovens, entering what seems to be a kind of cookout dimension. This space is where SCP-106-J is assumed to have complete control over the environment, as well as others' ability to enter or exit at any time. Limited observation of this space has shown it to be com comprised mostly of freshly mowed lawns and a recently constructed suburban residential neighborhood with dad eggs bunched. Notes on Behavior during hosting events, SCP-106-J will attempt to satiate visitors by serving hamburgers, hot dogs, or chicken sandwiches after pulling invited guests into its cookout dimension. This activity can continue for days, with some subjected individuals being given meals in between games of catch, receiving life advice, redacted, a cold one, dad expunged. SCP-106-J seems to undergo long periods of dormancy in which it remains motionless in its armchair watching television. These events can last for an entire postseason playoffs before SCP-106-J arises in a groggy, agitated state. Camera feed has shown that SCP-106-J will make its way to the site cafeteria slash kitchen or near such facilities in an attempt to raid refrigerators and pantries before escaping into its cookout dimension. Oh my. SCP-106-J appears to host and serve based on desire, not hunger. SCP-106-J will, co will collect multiple visitors during a hosting event, keeping many fed in the cookout dimension for extended periods of time. SCP-106-J has no the determinable limit to the number of patio chairs and paper plates it can provide. Recall Protocol Should SCP-106-J breach containment, a D-class personnel of suitable age will be brought to the container and prepared for use in the rec recall protocol. When ready, the lower subject will be hungry, preferably due to not having not eaten for several hours or otherwise spoiled our appetite. The lore subject will, will then be placed in the cell with, in the sound emitted by the rumbly tummy projected over the site's public as, address system. Should SP-106-J not respond to the recall protocol in a timely manner, the lore subject may be exposed to additional appetite stimulating measures. SP-106-J will typically release its lore subject after around five to eight hours. In addition, subjects may return with leftovers gifted by SCP-106-J, but these will data expunge. <laughs> this is just making fun of SCP-106. <laughs> 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 We don't need to talk about That's this. This is reassigned. That's why it's called 106-J. True. And yeah, this is reassigned. There's no way this cannot be reassigned. Uh, but yeah, like it's not even hurting anyone. It's not even a keter. Yeah, it's just a... Yeah, it's just an old man who wants to cook for people. <laughs> okay, so what's next?
SCP-112 ARC. Oops, I don't mean to do that. Fuck. All right. So it's not a joke this time. <laughs> All right. Description of SCP-112-ARC. The object ha has been determined to be a sphere approximately 2 meters in diameter. This is based on thermal imaging radar and x-ray tests. It apparently emits radio waves, heat, and radiation of very varying degrees. There is no evidence to suggest... The artifact is capable of locomotion, but is, it is also has not been ruled out. Hmm. Volunteers of both sexes who have undergone castration of the testicles and ovaries are required to keep the object stable. Previous to redacted acquisition of the artifact, it was cared for by Vatican Unox. Percent Presently is cared for by Redacted, who are closely monitored. Proceeding is an excerpt from research of Dr. Omid Mohammedin. The castrati used to attend this, this subject are reluctant to discuss the object and never refer to it without provocation. Their personalities completely change after first exposure to the artifact, and their memories appear to be become corrupted. When confronted about scientific readings of the object, they become agitated and describe the object as a young black boy. When questioned about the artifact's abilities, they describe normal child behavior and refuse to acknowledge any paranormal activity related to the object. They do not appear to have a name for the object, or if they do, they do not discuss it with others. Their volatile nature makes it imperative that the personnel restrict their contact with the cash shrati to the most basic of interactions, and that operators not attempt to gather more intelligence from the cash shrati. Continue to monitor the object's radio emissions, radioactive emissions, Thermal emissions and any other emissions deemed necessary. Record this data. The object itself appears to be sentient or at least emotional. It will make various demands through the castrati from literature to music, cloth to raw uranium ore. Its demands are always financially feasible and easily met, but completely indiscernible. There is no apparent pattern, but when denied anything it desires, it it can begin emitting dangerous levels of radiation for just less than two miles and reaching temperatures of upwards of 450 degrees Celsius. Not until its demands are met will the artifact reduce its lethal emissions. It has been ob observed that oxygen the castrati has a direct effect on the mood of the artifact. Angering them does, it does as well. Also, the castrati should never be restrained and encouraged to spend as much time awake and with the artifact as possible. This has that dress, drastically worked effect on the emissions of the object, reducing the potential lethal emissions to almost zero. As long as this equilibrium is maintained, the artifact is harmless, otherwise it will become highly dangerous on life on Earth. The above is current by, confirmed by current research. The subject has a singular ability, however, that has only been known to be activated when artifact is approached by a human retaining their complete sex organs and who still have normal levels of sex hormones. Immediately, the artifact will begin generating a massive gravitational field and pinning everyone in the room to the ground. Within a few moments, however, the gravity will, be, will become so intense as to destroy anyone with anything in the room, destabilize the bunker, and cause seismic activity. The gravity field is known to be effective up to 3 miles 
spherical area around the object and have a force of 22 G. Attempts to provide the artifact with castrated non-virgins have also proven disastrous as if artifact reacted extremely similarly. And the only difference, however, is that none of the volunteers present in the room at the time, nor the room itself, suffered ill effects. Only the transgressor. But the transgressor's wounds were consistent with sudden exposure to extreme gravity. It is, it is speculated that if the object were to be in proximity to sensual expressions, such as kissing or even copulation, then its capacity for destruction would be an unimaginable. Oh, jeez. That is SCP-112-ARC. Hmm. Hmm. I can see how it can go in a certain group, because, like, it's only affecting mm -hmm. people who aren't castrated. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, like, that's most people on Earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what to, where to put this. Because, well, then again, wait, I'm going to look to see again how far it can go with its radiation. Mm-hmm. It can only shoot its radiation less than two miles. So that's that's actually pretty small. That's not even city sized, depending on the city. It did say that they don't know what would happen if there was kissing or sex or anything shown to it, so... Right. Which means it could get even more pissed off. Mm hmm Hmm. I guess since we're not really sure at the moment, we can just put in a certain group. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can always go back and talk about it. Mm hmm Certain group fits currently, so. Right. Where's the picture of it? There it is. Oh. We're, well, we're actually going through a lot of these by ourselves. <laughs> Let's see. Next is not. Um. Uh, dash to ARC or choke or other thing. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see its number again. It is 122. Alright. I'm probably gonna do just two more and then that'll be it. So after this, two more. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can still talk, but, like, anyway. Description. SCP-122 uh, is a children's nightlight in the design of a uh, stylized shooting star. When it's in its powered state, SCP-122 sets off between 14 to 20 LX. No manufacturer's mark is pre present on or within SCP-122's components. When in an unpowered state, SCP-122 will affect all subjects when within a 500 meter radius of its location. When the subjects enter uh, REM sleep, they will mo move into a comatose state in which they will remain until SCP-122 is resupplied with power. While comatose humanoid figures appearing to be composed of a black, slightly translucent mass will appear from any shadows around the subject. These figures are hereafter known as instances of SCP-122-1. Instances of SCP-122-1 
exhibit signs of sapience and sentience, with physical abilities roughly equivalent to the affected subjects, and they will attempt to locate as many human subjects as possible and expose them to SCP-122's effects. As more subjects are affected by SCP-122, its radius of effect will expand with the maximum range seen in testing being over 2.7 kilometers. The SCP-122-1 instances will attempt to gather all sleep aids within the area and effect of effect and apply them to the subjects. These objects have included insomnia medication, traditional medicines known to be used as treat, treatment with insomniacs, pillows, blankets, mattresses, and bed frames, media such as lullabies. When in a power state, SCP-122 will affect the sleep patterns of all subjects within its radius. If a subject awakens from a state of REM sleep, while within SCP-122's radius, they'll display signs of insomnia and will, and will complain of unusual dreams. These dreams have been found to cause minor psychological disturbances, and all personnel should be given weekly psych psychological evaluations. SCP-122 was discovered within the Linnell Children's Hospital on Redacted, after several reports of SCP-122-1 manifestations reached embedded agents. When the area was investigated, it, it was found that all subjects within the building have been affected by SCP-122. Recovered documents indicate that a patient brought SCP-122 when being admitted. However, no rec record of the patient's identity has been found. Agents secured SCP-122 with a portable power source, and it was transported to Site-19. Addendum 122-B SCP-122 reclassified to Keter following Incident 122-1, moved to Armed Recruitery Containment Area-02. Incident 122-1 on Redacted, 11 instances of SCP-122-1 breach containment causing the death of over-redacted members of site personnel and redacted casualties. Following recontainment operations, SCP-122's containment procedures were put under review. During this review, security footage, footage of several maintenance personnel tampering with, with SCP-122's chamber lock was discovered. When questioned, the subjects claimed that they had done so under duress, saying that a canary was not allowing them to sleep until they released SCP-122. Affected subjects were given Class A amnestics, and containment procedures were revised to upgrade to Keter requested. Alright, that's all the information. So, that's a nightlight in like five... Okay, five... Oh, yeah. 500 miles radius is pretty large. That could like literally be an entire site, depending on, on their sites. Mm -hmm. So that can hit like a lot of people. Hold on, I want to see something too. Hold on. Let's see what we can do. Alright. So I decided to look like what's like the smallest city recorded, which is like in meters, which is 4,500. 
which means like a big portion of that city, if it was put there, would fall under its effects. Not only that, but also the instances would also go haywire. <laughs> so, even though it can't affect like a full city under its regular effect, it doesn't really need to because it has its instances. And if the procedures go under, an entire site can go under its effect. So I'm thinking city. Because, mm -hmm. like, a country would be too large. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. And there we go. Alright, let's see what's next. One two SCP one two five dash D E five dash D E. I believe this is German hmm. SCP, but all right. Anyway. Description of SCP-125-DE designates a humanoid entity currently located as a large cavern beneath Burberg in the Kjofhauser. This cavern is part of, the, of a tunnel which, due to its nature, is designated as SCP-125-DE. DE-A. SCP-125-DE has the appearance of a man between the ages of 60 and 70. The entity wears a red gown, a golden hoop crown adorned with different gems, and a crucifix. The entity measures 410 centimeters in height, but weight could not be determined. It is estimated to be around 800 kilograms. Hmm. The entity sits on a throne that appears to be made of ivory and rests its head in its hands on a round marble table approximately 8 meters in diameter. The hair of the entity is continuously growing with an orange-yellow light. SCP-125-DE has a beard that re reaches through a hole in the table down to the ground and encircles the table approximately six and a half times. SCP-125-DE has yet to be observed taking in sustenance, and is therefore believed to not require any. Hmm. Collected data suggests that SCP-125-DE is a class IX reality-bending entity, However, it only uses its power to prevent itself from being harmed, relocated, or further contained in, in some form, particularly hmm. since the Foundation began monitoring. Even while you, using its powers, SCP-125-TE only makes a minimal effort. Hostiles are teleported away a few meters and or disarmed, and persons tasked with moving SCP-125-DE suddenly forget their tasks. Given SCP-125-DE's impaired environmental perception, it is assumed that this is an automated defense mechanism on which the entity exerts no direct influence. SCP-125-DE seems to be half asleep at all times and reacts very slowly on its environment. It is still possible to hold conversations with, with it in every desired language, even if it takes a very long for SCP-125-DE to formulate a response. Most, res most responses are often mumbled. SCP-125-DE claims to be Frederick I, the Holy Roman Emperor, and states that it was it was imprisoned in SCP-125-DE-A. These claims 
could, until now, not conclusively verified or de dismissed. The entity sometimes asks present personnel if there are still ravens on a mountain. This question is always affirmed as of redacted, causing SCP-125-DE to briefly sigh. At the moment, it is unknown if or how the presence of ravens in the area of Berg, Berg at Berg impacts SCP-125-DE, but the population of common ra ravens in Kjalfhauser and Berberg in general was put under observation as a precaution. The interior of SCP-125-DE-A is currently not fully explored due to its size and possible limitless extents. The exploration is still being conducted, however, 567 life-size granite stat statues of knights, <laughs> soldiers, and court servants have already been discovered in the caves. Though the relocation for further study was not possible due to the narrow spaces in SCP-125-DE-A, the cave system itself possesses three anomalous properties. Firstly, it is not possible to enter SCP-125-DE using the other ways than its interests. During attempts to burrow into the cave system from the outside, the excavation crews only hit solid rock, which fills out the entirety space of SCP-125-DE-A is supposed to occupy. Secondly, it is impossible to permanently damage SCP-125-DE-A as any damage re repaired within seconds due to the passive effects of SCP-125-DE. Thirdly, any human entity inside of SCP-125-DE-A is shown to have intimate knowledge of the cave system from a practical standpoint, despite having never set foot in it. A third effect can be cons uh, counteracted by act actively focusing on reaching a different goal or area. SCP-125-DE-A appears to have created by the abilities demonstrated by SCP-125-DE and seems to only exist as, as long as it is maintained by the entity. This circumstance complicates the containment of SCP-125-DE because it cannot be exposed to scranton reality anchors in its current state. If such device is transported inside SCP-125-DE-A, it immediately erases a space influenced by reality bending and its area of effect and subsequently removed from existence together with all matter in its area of effect. The loss of space is replaced instantly after the sudden disappearance. Why SCP-125-DE claims to be imprisoned in a space created by itself is not known at this time. However, Dr. Stram theorizes that the entity is only entrapped in SCP-125-DE-A because it believes itself to be imprisoned and activates its reality bending capabilities as a consequence. All right. Addendum 125-DE-1 on redacted outpost de 25 was attacked by 52 entities with a strong resemblance to SCP-094-DE. Assets to the Foundation at the scene had only anticipated human aggressors and could consequently only stall the attackers. It turned out that explosive weapons were necessary to fully neutralize the entities because they remained able to act as long as they had at least one appendage remaining. MTF-DE-6-D-FGBOT was dispatched with the appropriate equipment and after two hours could successfully fend off the attack. All attackers were successfully neutralized. The Foundation sustained 29 casualties and 33 wounded. During an analysis of the remains, it, it became apparent that all neutralized entities f were marked with the logo of the GOI known as Fourth, Fourth Reich. 
after this incident, the special containment procedures were updated accordingly. Addendum 125-DE-2, since redacted, the population of common ravens in the Kaufheiser is subject to an increasing numbers of cases of parasite infection. Efforts are, are underway to maintain the population. And that's it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, he mainly just wants to be left alone. Kinda. Mm-hmm. I mean, he. I mean, he wants to be unimprisoned, but like, he doesn't want to be attacked. But he wants to be in prison, but he can't be. Right. I like how the Foundation's first response to was to kill it. <laughs> Not even trying to communicate, just kill it. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't seem to be... I mean, it has reality building of capabilities, which is dangerous, but it's not using it as a hostile nature. And what I think is, like, with those 52 entities... Oh, wait, no. Yeah, 52. I think they actually got trapped in the cave. And they finally found an exit, and it was like, oh, humans. Or, or it could be that the Foundation was trying to attack the SCP again, and the SCP retaliated. Because, mm-hmm. like, he only seems to attack if he feels threatened. Which, I, I don't think it, it really is a keter. Uh, I'm more thinking of, of reassigned, because he doesn't want to really hurt anyone. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you think? I agree. Yeah. Let's see what it look like. Okay. Where's the picture? Where's the picture? There it is. Reassigned. All right. Let's see. What is the final SCP of the night? SCP-129. I think... I think we both know what this one is. Because the life is fun. Oh, yeah. I think. I'm, I could be wrong. With the SCP... Okay, it's not, this, it's not the one I was thinking. But I have used it. But alright. Uh, description. SCP-129 is a series of at least... Redacted different species of fungus that can affect any animal with uh, mucosal membranes. Infection of SCP-129 can pass through up to five stages. With each stage of infection facilitating possession to the next stage by weakening an individual's resistance to subsequent infection. Due to the combination of historical events, most humanoids and animals are naturally immune to SCP-129-04 through SCP-129-4 redacted. Therefore, outbreaks of stage 3 infections are quite rare, but have potential for widespread infection if not swiftly isolated and contained. All known instances of SCP-129 have followed the below 5 stage progression although that expunge possibly due to mutation. <clears throat> Stage 1. The, f- the first organism, SCP-129-01, attacks the victim's mucosal membranes, multiplying quickly and unobtrusively. A faint yeast-like smell might be detected, but beyond that, SCP-129-01 is... Uh, asymptomatic a second organism can be can then affect the host causing the victim to experience system, symptoms identical to those of of acute viral uh, nasopharyngitis aka the common cold 
the increased efficiency of the host's immune system due to infection from SCP-129-02 allows SCP-129-01 to become entrenched further. SCP-129-01 and 02 generally leave the host's body within four or six days. Though both species are fairly widespread and most of the population has little to no protection against either organism, they pose little danger to themselves except to facilitate infection by SCP-129-03. Stage 2 Although SCP-129-03 is usually stopped by natural mucus, Stage 1 infection changes the composition of the host's mucus so that the host is significantly less resistant to SCP-129-03. Once established in the host, SCP-129-03 alters the host's mucus, lymph, and blood such that other species of SCP-129 can thrive in the host. Symptoms of stage 2 infection include greatly increased mu mucus production, a nagging cough due to excess phlegm, a lingering low-grade fever, increased sweating and salivating, a somewhat increased preference of, for vegetables, and a complaint that certain fruit juices taste odd. Infection by SCP-129-03 generally lasts anywhere from 2 weeks to 4 months, before being driven out by the immune system, unless the host enters stage 3 infection. At least, redacted percent of all humans have experienced stage 2 infection at some point, but due to natural immunities and the re relative variety of stage 3 species, less than redacted percent of that reda redacted percent have passed into stage 3. Stage 3 in the absence of SCP-129-03, nearly all animals are immune to the three species that cause stage 3 infection. However, a small number of stage 2 victims can now uh, become infected with one or more of these species. In, th in these cases, the fungal infections become entrenched in the host and cannot be removed without extraordinary measures. Individually, the three stage species will exploit different symptoms in the host. SCP-129-04 causes increased tear production, slight yellowing of the eyes, data expunged. SCP-129-05, data expunged, causing the host nails to thicken and significantly increase earwax production. SCP-129-06, data expunged, in particular, bright yellow urine and small pellets in host feces, both of which smell strongly of yeast. However, a victim who becomes infected with all three of the species will within hours develop flu-like symptoms and become bedridden for three to five weeks. Afterward, though, the victim appears to have, fu uh, have recovered fully. In, in actuality, SCP-1 29 has spread throughout the, all systems and host's body, making the passage into stage 4. Stage 4 victims who reach stage uh, who reach stage 4 generally appear healthy and indeed may be more lively and energetic than at any time since first contacting SCP-129. In actuality, SCP-129-01 through 06 has spread throughout the host's body, completely infiltrating the subject's immune, respiratory, uh, circulatory, reproductive, data expunged, and central nervous systems. Mycelia from the SCP-129 species also permeate the host's skin and replace some percentage of the host's hair. These uh, hyphae which are nearly indistinguishable from the host's natural hair, are used to propagate SCP-129 to other hosts. Any potential host that, that comes into contact with, sh with shutoff 5 a has a uh, redacted recent chance of becoming infected with SCP-129. Hyphae seem to be equally contagious from any part of the host's body, although data expunged if... if 
especially transmitted due to data expunged. Despite increased susceptibility to SCP-129, stage 4 victims are much more resistant to viral and bacterial pathogens than uninfected subjects. All known subjects who have, who have reached stage 4 have either progressed to stage 5 or died within redacted weeks. Stage 5 Symptoms of stage 5 infection depend on a variety of factors, including the partic particular stage 5 species that are present, as well as in genetic, psychological, environmental, and any number of unknown factors. However, as in stage 4, all stage 5 victims are highly contagious and can infect victims who have frequently shown complete immunity. Notable manifestation of 5 stage victims. February redacted. Witness writing in a community train train car and data expunged described a woman suddenly blowing up like a balloon and exploding. But instead of the blood and viscaria, the contents of the car were covered in spores and filaments. Analysis later showed that the victim was infected with SCP-129-09, SCP-129-14, and SCP-129-19. Redacted. All per persons and objects in, in the affected area were quarantined euthanized, and incinerated per protocol. Redacted casualties, including redacted Foundation personnel, may redacted following the string of disappearance and data expunged, were tracked to a cave of several kilometers from the town. Inside, investigators found several pulsating mounds of flesh and vegetative material. Although most were unrecognizable, a few of the entities retained some human characteristics and were identified as some of the missing citizens. Researchers theorize that the victims of the combination of SCP-129 would interact normally with the, with the populace, attempting to infect others until after a period of time, they would come to the cave. Upon arrival, the victims would be changed into pulsating vegetative flesh mounds, which appear to be organisms modified to provide a long-term source of substance <sighs> for SCP-129. Analysis suggests the flush mounds could potentially live for redacted years. Autopsy revealed the presence of SCP-129-10, SCP-129-11, SCP-129-14, and SCP-129-19. Redacted. Site quarantined and sanitized per protocol. Redacted known casualties. Data expunged. That's it for SCP-129. Gosh, damn. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, like, very dangerous. But, like, like it said in Stage 2, it's a very small amount of people who go out in Stage 3 and higher. <laughs> so, since it's a large... Uh, not, I mean, large, small amount of people... I'm thinking city. Yeah. Because, like, granted, it could do damage for the rest of the ecosystem, but, like, it can only go that far with a small amount. So, what do you think? Yeah, I think city is good. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's what it looks like. Boom. All right, that was the last SCP for tonight. We actually, we actually went through a lot. Hmm. Uh, but yeah. So.